Good morning, and welcome to The Review, the Instagram Live podcast where Kandama news and culture is shared over the warmth of coffee. Today, I am incredibly excited to host a conversation with Kandama USA Pro, Haley Bischoff, as we journey through her life as a Kandama player, her journey with coffee, as well as her new and recent journey with the Desert Wave Collective, with skateboarding and climbing and all those other things. We will get started here in about five minutes, and as usual, as we start every Brew View episode, I want to know down in the chat what you are drinking this morning. Myself, I'm drinking something quite special. This is not a Canadian roaster for, I think, one of the first or second times on this show. This is a roaster out of Arkansas down in the States. This is Onyx Coffee Labs. Have any of you guys heard of Onyx Coffee Labs? Let me know down in the chat. This is a Kenyan roast from them. I teamed up with a bunch of people here in Calgary, Alberta to do a big wholesale order with them. And I knew that I had to try it. Also, this packaging is dope. It's like a box and inside is your bag. The branding is incredible. The coffee smells amazing and it tastes really good too. This is my second cup. Uh, but the one really unique thing that I found about this packaging in particular was the texture on it. It's got like a, a really, really neat, uh, like rubberized texture that would make for a really, really good, uh, really, really good Kendama paint. I noticed a couple people in here have definitely had uh, Onyx. We got a couple in here that are hyping it up. Yeah, a bean inside a bag, inside a box. Absolutely. Let me know down in the chat what you guys are drinking. We got Josh Murray with his ginger mint tea with lemongrass. Uh, you should really be drinking coffee. It's better for you. We got Boston from Vegas. He is drinking the weakest cold brew he's ever made. Uh, definitely go follow him. He does cold brew shots all the time. He's trying to perfect his recipe. We got Danny Purchase. He's drinking his oat milk latte. If you don't know Danny, Danny's the guy who made these coasters and sent them out my way. Uh, they're amazing. Gino, thank you. You are one of my favorite parts of every day. So for, for me to be a favorite part of your Saturday or for this show is incredible. We're going to get started here with Haley in a couple minutes. Um, a couple things that you need to know before we dive in. Uh, one, we love interaction from you guys in the chat. The best way for you to interact in the chat is either by A, commenting down in the comment section what you're hyped on, drop a comment, interact with the other people that are tuning in live, or B, put in a question in the Q&A tool. We have a few moments dedicated throughout the episode to answering your questions. So make sure you drop those in the Q&A at the bottom and we'll make sure that we answer as many as we possibly can. But as more people keep joining the show, uh, there are so many questions coming in, we can't get through all of them. That said, I wanna promo a couple things here right away. Um, one, if you aren't aware and you haven't been following me on either my main account or my new account, Brew Battle, there is a big Kanama event going down here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada called Brew Battle 2020. And I'm confident it will be the most caffeinated Kanama event of the year. This event is in somewhat honor of my birthday, but really it's just a, a, a reason to gather and play Kanama and compete. There's a lot of prizes and sponsors that are going to be announced next week with a limited capacity of players of up to 50 people at the venue. So if you are from Canada and you are interested in coming out to compete and to play and to just meet some homies, it's going to be three days in event time, uh, but the Friday and Sunday are totally optional. The event is on the Saturday. And if you have question, uh, please, if you have questions, please let me know by either DMing me here on my main account. I do try to reply to everything really quick or DM the, the event page uh, at Brew Battle on Instagram. Uh, lastly, also really stoked, guys, I, a couple of you guys send me stuff and it's kind of crazy that you guys mail me things that you guys have made and I am beyond humbled every time. So I do want to show off this, uh, Bigfoot underscore handmade also made me some coasters out of a spectra ply that matches the grain of the Evo Kendama that I got made and it is utterly beautiful. He also made up there, I don't know if you can see, a Dama stand for that Evo Kendama that also is made from the same spec and he wood burnt my logo into this. I don't know if you can see this, it's a little reversed, but it is utterly fantastic. So thank you to Bigfoot underscore handmade. If you want handmade products that are wood turn, go and send him a message. He does coasters, he's looking at trying to get into some Dama manufacturing and some other things like that. Drop him a DM and say you're stoked on it. That said, I'm going to get Bish on here right away and we are going to get started. Yeah, Boston, those coasters are fire. What's good up, morning, everyone? Haley. How are you? I'm doing so good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. 
Oh, this is a huge joy and an honor for me to bring on another fellow coffee aficionado onto the review. You know, yes. we have a number of people who sneak on here with tea, and I really hope you're not one of them. No, right now, I actually picked this up this morning. Um, I've never tried this before, but it's a groundwork, uh, single origin Ethiopia blend. Oh, no I'm not way. gonna lie to you. I, even though I love coffee, I'm not like really into like where they come from or whatever. I just like light roast coffee. Yeah, Other yeah. than that, I'm not too picky. But Absolutely. It's and it's good. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you, you've already answered one of my, one of my warm-up questions, uh, which is, you know, are you a coffee drinker? I think most of us, if we followed you along for, for a fair amount of time, we would know you are, in fact, a coffee drinker. But I am curious, yeah. uh, what's your favorite way to drink coffee? Um, well, it depends. So if I'm out, I usually get an iced Americano with, like, soy or almond milk. But if I'm at home, okay. I usually just make a French press, mostly because the quantity is the quantity mm. that I need. <laughs> I drink a lot of coffee. But I've been trying to cut back because I feel like one French press a day is, like, a little bit excessive. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't made a French press in a long time. I've mm -hmm. been riding the AeroPress train for the past, like, two months or so. And I, I kind of go back and forth. I think once winter hits and on my weekends, I'll probably start switching back to doing Chemex. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've done Chemex before. Yeah, I have. I've never owned one, but my roommate Molly in college, she had one. So we would always make that yeah. together. But this morning with this one, I actually did AeroPress. So, oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, I mean, we can jump into a coffee conversation a little bit, but what method do you use for brewing your AeroPress? Um, usually, okay, I don't measure anything. I don't yeah. use scale. I don't do any of that. I just boil the water, put in like two scoops of coffee and then I okay. fill it to the top, but I use the like up method, not the upside down method. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, um, you don't do the inverted, you do the normal right. method where you put Just the cap the on and then you put it in. Okay, mm -hmm, yeah, exactly. I, do, I do the inverted method, but that's only because I was taught that way. Everyone does it different ways and I kind of yeah. love that about AeroPress is that there, there are a whole bunch of different ways to do it. You can double filter, you can triple filter, you can single filter, you can even get those like metal filters that some yeah. people use. It's, yeah, it's pretty I thought crazy. about that, but I still have like, because when you get AeroPress filters, I feel like they never run out, I swear. <laughs> like, I've had the same pack for probably two years. They, they do last regularly. forever. Yeah, but yeah, they last a once really, I really run long out. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, I typically ask three warm-up questions before we dive into the real meat of the conversation. We already okay. answered one of them. Uh, the other two questions I love to ask are, A, uh, what is one of your all-time favorite Kendama tricks? either one okay. that you've done or one that you wish that you could do that you just really admire watching. And then okay. after that, uh, favorite player of all time or, you know, sometimes interpreted as most influential player of all time or inspiring. Okay. So two questions. All right. So for the Kendama trick, I would say, I mean, there's a lot of Kendama tricks that I've never done that I wish I could do and maybe could do. But I would say my favorite tricks are like a lunar tray. You can't mm. be unhappy when you hit a lunar tray. It's like the most satisfying trick or like classic fish trick. Double lighthouse flip, insta trade spike. Mm, those yeah. are classic. And I, yeah. I wish I was better at tray flips. Tray flips are not fun for me because they're so frustrating. Yeah. But they do feel so good. And you, you've hit, have you hit the triple tray flip yet? I've been working on it. I've gotten a double okay. pretty on lock. I've gotten a double stilt tray. I have stilt trays pretty on lock too. But I've been oh, going man. for the triple lunar tray and it's a grind. But I feel like it's just one of those tricks where when it slaps, it slaps. It's going to slap. It's just like but I have to make sure it's on film because I don't know if I can repeat it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Before we dive in, I am curious, are you going to be in NACO this year competing? So I think I am. I still need to register. I want to do the girls open. Um, I honestly haven't really even looked at the tricks or practiced the tricks. Mm. But uh, one of my friends, Tez, who, Tez Cooper, she lives in Vegas. She's part of the Desert Wave Collective, which we'll talk about. Awesome. But we were um, hanging out the other day and we were talking about doing like a little get together. Well, not a big one because it's just me and her probably yeah. uh, at my place and doing the competition together because it just didn't sound super appealing to do it alone in your house yeah for some reason yeah i think i'm i think i'm gonna be hosting some people at my house for that weekend for, yeah. for at least one or one or two of the days and we'll compete either in my room with the review set up in the background nice. or something yeah it'll be it'll be a lot of fun yeah that's bjorn, awesome bjorn too talked about coming through for that weekend so maybe it'll be the three of us but yeah i do need to register so thank you for reminding me um <laughs> that's what i'm here for All uh, right, and then so lastly fa yeah favorite player all right favorite player um well i would say first of all what makes a good kendama player is somebody who just makes you want to play kendama you know mm. i don't yes. think it's like skill level or anything else it's just like is this person having fun with dama and are they making me want to pick up mine mm. and so i would say consistently i mean it changes who i like to watch but over the years i would say misu 
for sure. Oh. And Brian Skagline, both for like different reasons. But I mean, Skags makes me super psyched to play. Love his style, love his editing. Mm -hmm. um, and Misu is just like the most passionate Kanama player you've oh. ever seen. Whether if you've seen her at a competition, whether she's losing or winning, like the girl has tears in her eyes and it's just passion. She's amazing. Like you can just tell. Yeah, I love her. She is, she is in my top three favorite players of all time. I mm -hmm. love her style and I love her smile after every trick she laces. I know. Because she's always happy. And yeah. she's never frustrated or, well, maybe she does get frustrated. She doesn't mm -hmm. show it at least. Uh, and it just looks like she's playing Kanoma because she loves the game. She and does. I love that. Yeah, I love and I've that seen so her much. grow up too. I mean, like, I met her probably, what, 2014 or 2015? And I don't know how, I actually don't even know how old she is now, but she's still pretty young. Um, but it's been cool to just, like, see her grow up and, like, become a human, you know, and, like, become yeah. so good at Kendama. She's, That's she's awesome. Great. Yeah. Cool. Well, I, I just want to remind those of you guys that are in the chat that we're going to be diving into this conversation. We're going to be focusing on Ke uh, Haley's Kendama journey alongside some coffee stuff. As well, we're going to dive into a conversation on what's happening in your life now today uh, with Desert Wave Collective, climbing, and, and everything outside of Kendama. I want to really bring people into your life outside of the Dama world because, I mean, a lot of us have probably seen a lot of your old edits, your tours with the Kusa squad, traveling across the world, traveling across mm -hmm. North America. But but I think a lot of us are, are in the mystery of what do you do outside, outside of Kendama. And I think it would be really fun to get to know that side of you and what you're doing there. So sure. as we dive into that conversation, I just want to remind you that are in the chat uh, that you can add questions to the conversation. We've set aside some time for some live Q&A. The way you can do that is just by clicking that little question box at the bottom and putting in that question there. And we'll make sure we try to get to as many as possible. But we'll only pick the good questions because there's always too many. So make yeah. sure they're good. <laughs> that said, are you ready to dive in? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Well, one of the questions I always do like to ask is, what was your very first point of contact with Kendama? Going way back to the original touch point where you could look back and say, this is where Kendama entered my life. Yeah, okay. So this dates back quite a bit. Um, May 2010 is when I first started playing Kendama. Um, I grew up in Bend, Oregon. So it's a ski town, right? A lot of the ski yeah. towns were the main places in the U.S. that Kendama started popping up in. Um, and some of my friends just had them in art class and we just okay. started messing around with them. My first Kendama was a sky blue Azora. Mm -hmm. Um, and for some reason, like one day I painted on it, like I painted a Mickey mouse. It's probably like deep on my Instagram, like probably one of the first things I ever posted, yeah. but I painted the Tama like with a Mickey mouse on it. And now I kind of wish I didn't cause I'm like, it's a sky blue Azora. It's your first Kendama. What are you thinking? Yeah. But, um, yeah, 2010 was when I first started playing and, um, yeah, I, I really didn't take it super seriously i just loved it at first it was just fun it was addicting it was just something to do um and then it kind of evolved you know but mm -hmm. it's, been, oh, it's been a decade it's crazy you've been playing for 10 years that's crazy yeah. yeah and and i imagine throughout those 10 years there's probably been ups and downs that, you know moments where you may have wanted to pause or even take a break were there any of those moments throughout those 10 years where you're like man, this is becoming something that maybe I don't want it to be. And you, and you decided that you needed to take a break. Did that ever happen for you? Um, I wouldn't say there was ever a moment where I was like, I don't want to play Kendama. I want to quit Kendama. It's always been hmm. something that's a part of my life. And I mm -hmm. never questioned that. But I do think that with anything that you do all the time, it's good to take breaks. You know, it's good to not be doing the same thing all the time because you kind of can get complacent with whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, you can get so that, stuck in your way of doing it. For sure. Yeah. And so I think, I mean, there's been healthy breaks that I've had where I don't post content for a couple months or I don't pick up a Kendama for a week, but that doesn't mean that I've never not wanted to have it in my mm -hmm. life, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. So throughout your 10 years, you've obviously been on a ton of different adventures, tons of different travels. You eventually were sponsored by Konami USA, which I imagine was a really incredible moment in your yeah. story and journey. I think that's something that so many players today look up to as kind of a pinnacle moment in a journey. What was that like for you? Um, it, was, it was a big moment for sure. And it was something that I didn't really expect too. And um, okay. I mean, I'm sure that my... My story's like been out there a little bit, but I can do yeah. like at least a brief rundown for you. Yeah. Um, so 2013 was when I first got sponsored uh, by Kendama okay. USA. Whoa. So three That's years seven after. Years seven yeah, years I've been ago. on the team for seven years. Yeah. So, wow. and actually, I how it all kind of played out is that um, Turner Thorne, he lived in Bend when I lived in Bend. And so we had mutual friends and we met up and he kind of was one of the first people to teach me and actually like really inspire me to play Dama. 
And then um, the KG Roots tour came through Eugene and Portland, Oregon, and I went to both of those stops. And I met everybody on the team. I met Jake, I met Dave, I met Keith, um, mm -hmm. you know, Colin Turner, like all these people that I like had looked up to for so long, these people were my idols. And mm. they ended up actually staying at my house because they needed a place <laughs> to crash like before they left. Cla um, classic Kandama players just right. crashing at people's homes. Definitely I, don't make enough money for hotels. So. No, no. And I was just moving into this place too. It was my, uh, one of my college houses. And I literally had zero furniture. Like I had just moved in. And so everyone was just like laying on hardwood floor. But they're like, we don't care. It's a place to stay. Um, but like two weeks after that, we, I uh, received a package from Kandama USA. And that in my mind was kind of like, uh, okay they they're interested right because there was really no mm -hmm. girls that were like really on a team steph lucier was on a team she was on right. uh, kenko actually but yeah um, shout out to steph lucier right Calgary, another Calgary og Reffin. girl yeah one of the oldest, yeah and oldest from canada yeah she's a yeah. homie yeah much love to steph for sure um but yeah so there was really no girls that were sponsored and so i think i got lucky in the sense that the timing you know there wasn't that many um, so it was easier for me to get in, you know, versus now it's a little bit more saturated for everybody, girls and guys. Um, mm -hmm. But it just worked out. And the chemistry between like me and the Kusa team, I think the team chemistry is a big thing because you're going to be traveling the world with these people. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to get along. And so it just it fit and it worked. But yeah, yeah, well, that, that's cool. So you were sponsored seven years ago. What mm -hmm. was your first trip that you ever took with the, the Kusa team or on behalf of Kusa? Okay, so I, I'm going to break this down into two trips. Okay. Well, okay, maybe even three. So the first ever MKO in 2013 was the first trip that Kandam USA bought me a flight for. Oh. Um, and this was before I was even announced on the team. It was just kind of like, a, hey, we're going to send you out here, you know, help with the booth, compete, whatever. Um, I went up uh, against Matt Dakota and just got completely wrecked. It was like my first call. <laughs> I, but whatever, I don't care. I don't really even like competing that much, to be honest with you. Um, but... So that was my first trip unannounced on the team. And then three months later, two months, I went out to San Francisco with Jake Weens to film my announcement video and an Adobe and Sony commercial, which was totally random, but it just worked out. And I actually looked it up the other day and the commercial is not online anymore. You were um, in a commercial? Yeah, me, Jake and Harold Boyson were in a commercial for Adobe TV and Sony. And that was no way. my first like actual trip but on that trip too we filmed my tr uh tribute announcement video oh yeah so well, that's so cool i want to yeah. like we, we obviously won't have the time to dive into that but yeah man i want to know more about this commercial yeah I, i'll so have to cool. find it i'll have to see if jake has it or something but yeah it was great and then um so my first actual announced on the team trip um you know officially on konami usa tribute team was hawaii in january of 2014 and it was jake oh. tj dave and myself and that was seriously so surreal for me because that was the time that Kendama was first like exploding, right? Especially in Hawaii, it was huge. Um, we had like 1,400 competitors at our event at Pearl Ridge Mall. We literally had like security walking us to the bathrooms. We had wow. like autograph signings. We had this huge crowd. It was on the news. We were on the news. Wow. And it was like, it was so weird because I was like, all of a sudden I'm just like this random person, you know, who just likes ball in a cup, you know, gets on a team and we go to Hawaii and we're all like famous. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. but then after that, you know, it obviously like slowed down and kind of died out a bit over there. But that to me was like the most shocking, surreal week of my life, mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah. but and maybe we can dive into to that conversation a little bit. Cause I, I'm curious from, from your standpoint, cause you've been in Kandama for 10 years, you've mm -hmm. kind of gone through the first big wave and now it's, mm -hmm. and now it's resurfacing as something really big again, but right. almost like a deeper big. Uh, right. where where the people that are playing now are are all very committed they've been in it for a while and there's mm -hmm. a new progression game coming out yeah what, what has that been like for you as someone that's been in it for 10 years just seeing the game that you originally loved go through you know up in the down yeah i mean the downs are hard because you want kendama to do well you know we all want to push kendama we all love kendama um but i think that's just kind of the nature of the toy and i think hawaii was a really good example of that because um you know, it did seem like a trend. There are maybe a few players there that still play and they're going to be players for the rest of their lives, you know, deep core in the community. Um, mm -hmm. But it's cool to see it pop up in random places and have that same like explosion, like when it got big in um, Romania or, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. all those random places where it just bursts up. But um, it's, it's been cool to see the progression and cool to see the people that have really stuck with it because those are the people that you know really love Kendama and want the best for Kendama. And it's cool to see it grow too in general, like the skill level, the innovation of tricks, 
Um, I mean, I can't keep up for sure, but I'm cool with it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been cool to see it continue and last this long because no one really knew what to expect right, mm -hmm. when we first all started. But yeah, totally. Wow. And, and it's been such a journey. Like I haven't been playing for that long, but I've been in it now for, I think it's getting close to six years, five Which and a half Which is a long time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even I, I think I joined into the Kendama scene when it was sort of in its dip. And then I got mm -hmm. to ride the wave back up, but I didn't, right. I didn't experience the dip. I joined yeah. in when it was sort of a, an indie culture again. And, yeah. and I think that was really interesting for me to watch the climb. And I felt like, I think, I think I'm starting to try and get prepared. Is there going to be another dip? And maybe that's a question that, that you might have insight into. Do you think that there's going to be another dip in Kendama where it resets and refreshes again? I mean, it's possible, but honestly, like the, the place that we're at in the, in the subculture that it is, it's still a small subculture, but it's also still like a really, it, it's grown, right? So it has its roots, like Kendama has its roots. And things like even this podcast or things that are new and unique and innovation, like innovative within this community are what's going to keep it from not dipping and keep people involved mm. and keep people excited. So, I, I mean, it's possible that there's going to be another dip. I thought there was going to be more of a dip with COVID and all the mm. sales and everything. But it yeah. seems like if anything, it is it, it went, it did the opposite. It was. Yeah. So, yeah. Every company is sold out. <laughs> well, aside yeah. from the major ones, but it's crazy. Yeah. So it's amazing. Know, it's always possible. But I mean... The people that want to keep it alive well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So maybe to wrap up a bit of the, the Kenoma conversation, because I mean, your, your Kenoma story has been told a little bit. And I think, mm -hmm. I mean, you, we get to see a lot of it. But where do you see yourself in Kenoma in the future? You've launched now two pro mods. I have mm -hmm. your original one, which yeah, I, I see bought. Yeah, I that. Thank you. I, I bought that actually the same year that I met you. I don't know if you actually remember that, but we, we, act, we had mm -hmm. met two years ago. At MKO. At MKO 18. Yeah. And, and we hung out a little bit. You were so nice. Ge genuinely, cool. those of you in the chat, those of you that are listening to this after the fact, Haley Bischoff is a very genuine person. You spent time with someone who is no one and just hung out with me and my friend and chatted with us. And it was awesome. And so thank you. Uh, yeah. And that partly inspired me to definitely go and purchase your mod alongside the D Westy because there was like some combo yeah. deal that day. Right. So I bought both of those mods. Yeah. And, but you've now released two pro mods under mm -hmm. Konami USA. Where do you yeah. see your Konami journey going in the future? What does yeah. it look like for you? Well, thank you for saying all that. It's very nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I would say, I mean, no matter what, I think Konami is going to be a constant in my life. Um, I would love to make another pro model. I would love to continue to create and collaborate with Konami USA or whoever else, even things like this, right? Um, I always want it to be part of my life and I don't really see it not being part of my life. Um, if anything though, I mean, it just kind of depends on what else I'm doing too because you have to find a balance between all these things, especially when you have multiple hobbies or multiple jobs, right? There's mm -hmm. only so much time um, but as long as it is still a part of my life in some way, shape or form, you know, I'm, I'm, I would be happy, but cool. Yeah. Uh, so to wrap up the Kanama side, one last mm -hmm. question, if you were to say anything to the Kanama community that, that you wish would be remembered by everyone, what would you want them to know? Um, I would say just keep playing, you know, I would say share Kandama. I think everyone should have a Kendama. You know, I think it's such an important thing to have because it's something that takes you away from screens or technology. It's, it's something that is tangible and physical and you can enjoy it for what it is, right? Um, don't feel like you have to be the best. Just do what you like to do with it and make it your own, right? You don't even have to learn tricks. You can wood burn. You can make art. You can make podcasts. Yeah. You can make magazines. You, can, you don't have to be a good Kendama player to love Kendama. So... so I, yeah, real quick. Let me tell you a real brief story. Those of you that are listening in the podcast afterwards, you should actually jump over to the to, to the IGTV afterwards to see this. There's a an old an older lady in in uh, oh my gosh. Toronto. Yeah, Spiffy uh, Spiffy Dot Toys. Mm -hmm. um, she is amazing. She is the most kind hearted, sweet hearted person I've mm -hmm. ever met in my life. Uh, and I haven't even met her, uh, but she wanted to send me out a little gift, and she would burnt me this Chrome Pop. And it's just got so much oh. detail on it. And she just took her time. There's coffee gang on here. My That's handle. Amazing. There's a cup of coffee splashing. And, and she, she just does this. And she wants to support the community and grow it. Her name's Sylvia. Those of you in the chat should really go follow her at spiffy.toys, I believe is the, the Instagram handle. And, and that's a way that she's contributing to yeah. the community. And it's amazing. 
Uh, and so, A, I just wanted to give her a shout out. And the yeah, art that absolutely. she did on here is amazing. And, and I think that kind of stuff is partly what, like you're saying, grows the community and mm -hmm. just be a part of it. Yeah, That's so find cool. your niche. Yeah, do what makes you happy. Yeah, yeah find your niche. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, Haley, you want to take five minutes with me and answer a couple questions sure. from the viewers. And then let's jump into life outside of Kendama. Let's talk yeah. Desert Wave Collective. Let's talk a little coffee. Let's talk skateboarding and climbing. I really want to know about climbing because I'm thinking about getting into it this yeah, winter. So should. I need some tips. Okay. We'll dive into that here shortly. But uh, okay, Gino Gaxtra, or however you pronounce his last name. I love this guy. He has a question. It was already answered. But how did you find Kendama? I um, yeah, briefly recap. Yeah, so I found Kendama through some friends in high school in 2010. Um, they just brought them to art class and we just played to recap <laughs> brief summary. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Brett Walters, another Vegas homie. He asked, what is the weirdest place you filmed a trick? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. That is a really good question. Like weirdest or like, oh my gosh, I feel like I've filmed Kendama in a lot of random places. I don't know if they're weird though, like outside, like on walls climbing or like oh, yeah, things like that. Tricks. I don't know if it's weird, but okay. maybe or, I yeah, most unique, maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe most unique on climbing walls, but maybe I'll, I'll film a weird trick for you. We'll see in a weird location. <laughs> All right, second question here from Brett Walters. Uh, will the All Girls Kendama Open be online this year? Yeah, so... I need to coordinate that, first of all. But I was actually talking with Tez about this the other day, um, and she came up with some really good ideas for how to make it online. Um, but kind of we're thinking I, – I need to talk to Yuka because her and I are the ones that usually collaborate on this event. Mm. Um, but we were thinking of somehow making, like, the All Girls Video Contest and the All Girls Kendama Open some what combined. Um, the details I don't want to really say, but mm. – Keep it I am secret. planning it. Yeah, I, awesome. it is in the back of my mind for sure. Awesome. Um, I don't know what this question is really asking, so maybe you do. Inward <laughs> okay. Lunar is asking, what does the desert provide? Okay, that's vague, but I like it. <laughs> um, so if anyone is familiar with like the desert, desert living, climbing in the desert, whatever it is, yeah. I think the desert just has a very unique and special energy to it. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, lots of green, lots of trees, lots of mountains, you know, a yeah, not right now. beautiful, not right now, unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> Bad joke. much love to everyone true. out there. Yeah, oh. for sure. I know it's horrible. Um, but the desert is just, it like gives you this, or at least me, I don't know, maybe I'm alone in this, but the desert does give me like a very specific energy, it makes me feel very alive. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm down in places like Moab or Castle Valley or, you know, Indian Creek or any of these places that just mm -hmm. have these like big, massive walls, tons of good, rich earth tone colors. Like it just is very special and it's kind of hard to describe, but it just, it does provide, it just provides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, you can choose not to answer them, whatever. You, I will never force you to answer a okay. question. <laughs> there's a couple of people asking about the current state of Kenoma USA and, okay. and where you're at. Uh, I know that from an outside perspective, a number of people are beginning to ask questions with certain people leaving Kanama USA. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to comment on that or, or add anything to it? There was a few people that asked, are you leaving Kanama USA? Mm -hmm. I, you can say things, you cannot say things. Totally up to you. Sure, yeah. I mean, I have no plans on leaving Kanama USA. Um, I love Kanama USA. I feel like I will be brand loyal to them mm. for as long as I'm in Kanama. They've done so much for me. They've given me so many opportunities um in in terms of other people leaving i mean those people are my friends my teammates mm -hmm. my family mm -hmm. i support them in whatever they want to do you know regardless of their reasons that's not my that's not for me to speak on but all i want is the best for my kendama family and mm -hmm. if they're happier mm -hmm. not on kendama you say or if they're happier on another team or on no team at all it's all good mm -hmm. you know it's all love Maybe to maybe to add a positive note to that question, what do you see as the future for Konami USA? Where do you see, is there some new stuff coming out that we should be excited for? Um, I think there's going to be new stuff. I don't want to say for sure exactly, sure. yes or no. But, um, I, I mean, hopefully I just see our team growing and expanding and, you know, adding more players, getting more unique personalities. You know, we, we are always looking for tribe members. Mm. Um, we always are kind of scouting, you know, but we don't want to add too many people too, because then the team gets oversaturated and it takes away from certain players. Mm. But mm -hmm. I would like to see some people on tribe, like bounce up to pro and mm. see more people come on to tribe eventually. But yeah, cool. no plans on leaving cool. Kusa. That's for sure. 
Awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, maybe we'll hit one more question here. Uh, we got a couple here that we can save for near the end. Let me see. Okay. Ken, Kenda Max or underscore Kenda Max underscore asked a question. What do you guys think about new Kendama companies? Um, new Kendama companies? I mean, like you did a conversation with Evo Kendama the other day. Yeah. And it, Evo... that was so awesome because I had never, I'd heard of the name, but I didn't know anything about him, anything about his company, anything what oh. he was about. So I think it's great. I mean, if you're someone who wants to contribute to Kendama in any way, shape or form, I'll support it for sure. I think it's great. Yeah. And there's a bunch of new Kendama companies popping up. And I think, like, I love healthy competition. I love mm -hmm. seeing new brands come up because it pushes other brands to do new things. And then we get to see new shapes, better better paints, whatever it is. Right. And we get to see some innovation and just more people getting into the game. Sometimes these companies are just making it more accessible for other countries to get access. Like, we have a new brand yeah. here in Canada, uh, Citadel Kendama. We featured them a little bit ago on the preview. Uh, and he's a Canadian homie who wanted to create Kendamas that would be a more, more reasonably priced for Canadians because, oh my goodness, the conversion is so expensive. Oh, I bet. I yeah. bought a Norks mod and with customs and everything, it was $140 to get up here. What are they uh, usually? Like what, 60, 50, 60 bucks? Yeah, I think it's like 65 or 70 with cushion Like, because I, I got it with cushion. Yeah, I was like, of course. Yeah, you have yeah, to. Why not? <laughs> yeah. uh, and it was so much money to get up here. So oh I really gosh. appreciate some of these smaller companies doing certain things that just make my life easier yeah. <laughs> or cheaper at least. Yeah, no, exactly. Cool. Um, all right. Are you ready to dive into a conversation about life, desert wave, skateboarding, yeah, everything? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, those of you that still have questions, make sure you put them in the Q&A at the end. And we have some time at the end that we're going to answer some of those as well. I know there's still some in there. So we will make sure we get to as many as we can before at the end of the episode. Cool. Uh, I really want to know, first off, you started a new thing with a group of your friends in Vegas yeah. called the Desert Wave Collective. What is the Desert Wave Collective? Yeah, so, okay, I guess I can kind of take you back a little bit to how it yeah. all originated. Give me the story. Yeah, so back when um, the quarantine first happened, I was living with Carolina Herrera. She, you know, a lot of you probably know her too. She um, plays Dama, but we were roommates here in Vegas. She recently moved, but at the time during lockdown, um, we were like, hey, we should get into skateboarding. And the only skateboard I had was a Kendama USA skateboard that was gifted to me like 2014 at a, a gift show in Tokyo from Kit Corporation from Kenzaki oh, cool. san And it's just like a, a regular deck, you know, maybe not the most quality deck, but like it's sick. And it has a big Kusa logo and like super sparkly red grip tape. Yeah. But so that was my skateboard. She got a skateboard. And during the lockdown, the whole strip was completely closed. Like all the casinos, like all the businesses, all mm -hmm. the bars, everything was shut down, which was eerie and weird, but like also kind of just cool. a ghost town it and was that's a ghost vegas town. right Ve yeah, vegas yeah. isn't a very big city from my understanding like it's actually like quite small and it's a very touristy place like the it's locals that live spread out yeah. yeah 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 and but but there's not that many actual locals and i've, I've heard it's actually pretty inexpensive to live in vegas mm -hmm. as, yeah, as local is that true for sure right, it I'm, is. I'm moving i'm coming yeah yeah come hang <laughs> Yeah, we'll go to the strip. It'll be fun yeah. <laughs> now that it's open. But it, it was closed down. And so all we would do is we would just, you know, at, at nighttime, we would just go skateboard down the strip because all the sidewalks are super smooth. And like, we're beginners, like, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, but we just started skateboarding down there and it was super fun. And then we connected with another girl that she worked with. Her name is Janeth. Um, and we all went skateboarding downtown one night right before Carolina moved. And then about two months ago, her and I kind of got back in touch together um, and started a group chat because she was like, hey, I really want to skateboard. And I was like, I really want to skateboard, too, but I don't want to, like, show up at a skate park by myself. And, like, you know, I'm sure it'd be fine, but it's just way more comfortable when you go with a group of people when you're new at something. Mm -hmm. And so um, we started this group, uh, just kind of started adding people to this group chat, all these girls. It's an all-girl group. Um, and a few of us met up. We went to a skate park. And accidentally, we went to, like, the most popular skate park probably in Vegas. It was insane. It was so so intimidating, so terrifying, because none of us can really do anything or couldn't at the time. We're getting better. But um, after that, we're like, let's just take it back a notch. We'll just go, like, cruise the streets. We'll go downtown. We'll just kind of get comfortable on our boards. And then week after week, more people started showing up. Yeah. Um, so now we meet, like, once or twice a week. Um, we've been going to the skate parks, like, all of us, I, I think what's so great about it is that we are all beginners, but we don't care. Like everybody was a beginner at some point in their life for mm -hmm. Kendama, for skating, for whatever you do, you're at one point a beginner. And so I mm -hmm. think, you know, once you kind of let go of what people think of you and you just really stop caring, 
it allows you to kind of be free and like be able to learn and be open to mm. learn. And so all of us are kind of, you know, encouraging of each other. We're in that mindset. Um, and we all roll up to the skate park. It's like a group of like five, six girls. Sometimes we outnumber the guys and it's just a good time. It's just That's fun. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Is there a trick that you're currently grinding for on your skateboard? Yeah. So I recently got down my kick turns. So I've been going into the big bowls and like not okay. dropping in yet. I dropped into a small thing. It was terrifying, okay. but I did it. Um, but I'm just learning to like carve the bowls a little bit. And yeah. then um, I'm working on ollies. I got, I think I got all four wheels off the ground the other day. And I really want to kick flip. That's like my end goal. Not yeah. end goal, but like, you know, how does in Kendama? Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. I've learned a new trick. Now I need to unlock something else. But yeah. my main you, grind right now is a kick flip. Interesting. So I know there's a lot of people that have gone from skateboarding into the Kendama world. And mm -hmm. they've said that there's some similarities in terms of the way that you, you know, approach doing tricks and learning. Do you find that some of the approach that you used to take to Kendama has translated in your approach to, to skateboarding? I do. I, I definitely do. But I think that Kendama, it's, it's such a micro level thing, right? And skateboarding, it's full body. And in some ways, Kendama is too. But like the mm. smallest little tweaks that you do with your wrist or the how you hold the Kendama or how, you know, how much mm -hmm. pressure you apply, the, the smallest minute things can unlock something or not. And I know that it's the same with skateboarding but I think the learning curve is a bit harder because mm. it is like so much more involved with your whole body. But I do think the whole mindset and the idea of the tricks and how you learn tricks and the progression is the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So what is the long-term hope with the desert wave collective? Do you want to see this become something bigger or is this just a page for you and your friends to gather and do this locally? Or do you have some, something up your sleeve that you're hoping to do with it? Um, I mean, no real major plans. I would love for this to continue and grow and become like a big community of girls that can yeah. hang out and like, you know, go to the skate park and just have a good time. I mean, guys are welcome too, but like the core group. Is yeah, females. I was going to ask on behalf yeah. of my friend, Brett Walters, he roller, yeah. he roller skates. So yeah, Brett, can he, can he come park. hang with you? Absolutely. <laughs> Everyone's welcome. But like the core group itself are, are the chicks. All right. Um, so but he no, can't I'm, get in the photos, but he can hang. No, you can get in the photos, but like you can't get in the group chat. Oh, okay. okay I see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry, Brett. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Brett. But you're welcome to come hang. Seriously, the more people, the better. You know, it's a good time. Um, a few awesome. of our other Dama friends in Vegas, um, they, they hang out at the skate park with us and, you know, cool. and all that. But yeah, we're, we're going to start um, doing more trips. We're going to Venice next weekend. The, the five of us who kind of started the, the group. Um, we're just going to go on like a founding fathers, like skate trip to Venice yeah. and do whatever. Um, oh, that's awesome. we're going to try to make some apparel. We're going to, we're making like phone cases and stickers. Cool. Um, Carolina made our logo. So we're going to oh. be using that to do stuff, but yeah, I just hope it grows and continues, um, into whatever it's supposed to be, you know, it'll work itself out. Awesome. Okay. I have one more question uh, regarding yeah. Desert Wave Collective. Why White Claws? In your bio, it's Will Skate for White Claws. I love it. I, I love White Claws. They're so good. Yeah, but, they're so good. But tell, tell me, what was, the, what was behind that? Or was it just something that just happened? It kind of just happened. I mean, I guess more than anything, it's like, why not? You know? Sure. Um, I mean, when we first started skating, this was like two months ago. So dead summer in Vegas, like 110, 115 degrees. And a white claw is just refreshing, you know, so when refreshing. you're outside. And I think it just kind of caught on, like, you know, go mm. to the skate park, have a drink, just relax, just chill. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you have a favorite They're flavor? I think it's a toss up between mango and tangerine right now. Okay. Hey, you're, you're at least on my side of the argument. There's a yeah. weird crew of people that think that they, that blackberry is the best. They're wrong. Like it's not bad, but it's not the best. No, it's mango, mango is yeah. so good. The mango whole pack, so the variety pack with like <laughs> tangerine, the mango, the lemon. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, let's talk a little climbing because I actually genuinely want to know things about climbing. And I think that like, from my perspective, you've kind of dabbled in a lot of unique things that sort of are all tied together around this individual progression, this like Kaizen like mm -hmm. progression where you yourself can improve yourself and it's not reliant on other people. So like Kendama, like skateboarding, but you can do them with other people. Right. Uh, uh, tell me a little bit about how you got into climbing and then, and then walk me through how I can get into climbing okay, and how other sure. people can get into climbing. <laughs> yeah. So I started climbing, let's see about five and a half years ago or so. Um, the first time I actually went climbing was outside, like actually climbing. And my, oh, one of my best friends, real? yeah, we, I was living in Bend at the time. And so we went to Smith, 
uh, Smith Rock. That's the big state park there with all of the world-class climbing. And uh, she actually took me, my best friend Zoe, she took me up at what's called a multi-pitch on my first climb outside. So it was like, it was an easy grade. It wasn't hard, you know, super physical. But mm-hmm. what a multi-pitch is, is where you, it's with a rope. So there's sport climbing, you know, trad climbing, and then there's bouldering too. But right. this was sport climbing. So we're, we're on ropes and we're, you know, hooking into what are called quick draws on the wall. Mm-hmm. And so you go up to an anchor and then you stop and then you go up again. So a multi-pitch is where you just keep going up and up and up. Um, and that was my first climb outside. And so, and I that's think, not, that wouldn't be considered like a, an entry level climb that cause that so there's technicality to doing that. Right. Right. The difficulty was entry level, but like the whole thing itself, I would say multi-pitch you usually don't do for your first one, but she was right. a climbing guide, you know, she knew what she was doing. So I trusted her. I, you know, she led the whole thing. Um, but after that I was just totally hooked. And then I kind of just had it here and there, you know, after college, after work, I would go to the climbing gym. And then I would say in the last like two years is when I really started to take it a little bit more seriously and train Mm -hmm. and like find projects and like really try to progress and have climbing goals. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, it's a huge part of my life. I go out every weekend for the most part. Um, one of the best things about living in Las Vegas is that there's year round climbing, like amazing Mm -hmm. year round climbing, which is one of the only places in the country that you can actually do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of all of the things like the skateboarding, the, the Kendama, the climbing, what I like about Kendama through all of those, and you kind of mentioned the whole Kaizen philosophy Mm -hmm. is that even though maybe I'm not doing Kendama 100% of the time, Kendama is always with me. So it's like, yeah, you can bring it to all of those activities. Yeah. I, there's always a Dama in my climbing bag. There's always a Dama in my bag when I go to the skate park, like no matter what. And so even though Kendama is not a hundred percent of my life, it's a constant in my life. And cool. the philosophies that Kendama brings like Kaizen, right? This continual self progression. So I think if you have that mentality with anything you're doing, I mean, yeah. it's good. But for you to start climbing, I would say okay, yeah. just find someone you trust, you know, find, so, if you're going to go outside, especially. Okay. So this, this was my, tell me if this is a good or a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Me, and, me and some of my coworkers were thinking of getting a bouldering pass. I like got a, a, a membership at a bouldering gym here, here in the city yeah. called Boulder. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and just starting there with doing like free climbing with the bouldering stuff. Cause mm-hmm. it's gen- generally like pretty safe. Is that a good place to start? Absolutely. Or should we, should we do rope climbing? I would say bouldering is a good place to start. Um, because there's, it's less involved. You need less things, right? You just need like your shoes. Yeah. You can just show shoes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good place to start. I think you should do it. Okay. And then, and then what, what are some reasonable expectations or things that I can do to help set me up for success? Um, I would say just like an all around general baseline fitness is good, but <laughs> all right, I got to work out, <laughs> <laughs> but no, but climbing also builds that like right. the more consistent you climb, the stronger you're going to get. All right. So if you consistently go like once or twice a week, at least you're going to build a baseline strength that will set you up to become better. I mean, it's still a learning curve, but it's with anything. Right. So cool. I would say just stay consistent with it. Now, do you think that climbing is for everyone? Um, I would say you have to have like the right mindset. Hmm. Like, I mean, I see a lot of people and I mean, I get down on myself too sometimes when I don't like send my project or, you know, climb as hard as I want to. But there's some people that just don't have the right mindset to where they get so, so upset with themselves Hmm. and so frustrated or they're, they're, they're just too scared or they're too anxious to be up on a wall or, you know, be Mm -hmm. up high. So I don't think it's for everyone. I think it can be for everyone, Hmm. but I so think then it's a what, lot of what, mindset. Yeah. yeah, so what's a good mindset to have? Um, I would say just a good mindset would be calm, right? Like trust yourself, trust your ability. Um, not being afraid of heights is a good one. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. Um, and just like not getting down on yourself too. You know, having the ability to bounce back if you don't succeed. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. I, I'm pretty eager to, to get into climbing. I'm, I'm really interested in it. I do a lot of mountain biking where I try to as much as I can. I haven't this much, that much this year, but that was always my summertime activity alongside Kendama. And then in the winter now, I want to transition to doing bouldering or indoor climbing because then I can stay you know, physically active throughout the winter as well. And yeah. I think it's a cool like collab area for Kendama and climbing. I think that there's a lot of unique you know, growth potential between both of them in that vicinity. So Absolutely. I think, it, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for me. Okay. We got 15 minutes left here, Haley. I, okay. I want to hear a little bit about outside of all the other activities, we get to see a little bit of your desert wave collective climbing and Kendama. 
But outside of those things, what are you like? What do you like to do? Um, well, I work a lot. I mean, yeah, that's what do you, a big what part do you of do? my life. Um, I'm a registered dietitian, so that's my okay. full-time job. Um, I also work part-time in the weed industry, actually. Cool. I help create, like, educational content for people who are building cultivations. Um, cool. And a lot of just random miscellaneous work for that company. So I have a full-time job that I work four days a week as a dietitian and then a part-time remote job that I do at home. So that takes up a lot of my time, you know, in addition to the climbing, skating, kendama. I also love to paint. I love to make art. That goes in phases, though. You know, if I okay. feel motivated, I'll do it. But it's not something right. I do all the time. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, that really takes up a majority of my life. <laughs> That's cool. Is it, yeah. So a couple personal questions. Um, mm -hmm. What do you wish people would see in you that maybe they don't? What is a characteristic of yourself that you wish would be more present in people's minds? Oh, that's a great question because I don't really know what people like think about me or what what their or, first yeah, impression what, is of what, me. What first impression would you like to leave on people? Maybe is a better way of saying that. Um, I guess just someone who's encouraging and supportive, and someone who like wants the best for everyone. Hmm. Yeah. So alongside that same note, then is there a characteristic or a trait that you'd like to cultivate in yourself more in the future? Uh, like, who do you aspire to be? I would say probably like more patience, finding more balance in my life. Um, but I don't know. These are, these are good questions. These are deep questions. <laughs> I, do, I do try and go a little bit deep. No, it's good. Yeah, I would say probably just more patience and finding more balance in cool. my life. What, what does that look like for you in, in the next couple of years? Um, I would say some of that is saying no to things when mm -hmm. things come up. You know, what is something you think that you should be saying no to right now that you are doing? Or what is, I mean, made, what is something you think you should cut out of your life? I wouldn't say there's anything to cut out. Okay. I would say sometimes it's cutting back or okay. just saying like, no, I'm not available now to do this thing for you. Sure, sure. Kind of Prioritizing thing. your time is right. so important and it's a right. good thing. It's healthy. Right. Setting boundaries. Yeah, that's that's probably it, I would say. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, Brett Walters, I feel like I'm on a, a job. And Chad Covington says maybe white claws. <laughs> Imp oh impossible. Gosh. Impossible. No, I'm not cutting out the white claws. That's, I mean, in moderation, right? It's cool. all good. Well, I don't know if I have any more questions. Like, I'm, I can always ask more questions, but I know that there's a bunch in the Q&A. Do you want to jump through some of these with sure. me for the last couple sure. minutes and then we'll wrap up? Thank you so much for jumping on here. This is yeah. awesome. I've gotten to learn so much about you. You are such a genuine and encouraging person. I've said that already, and I still will say that going forward. Uh, thank you so much for jumping on the preview. Yeah, thank you so Let's much for having me. I mean, it's, I've been watching all the episodes going back because the first one I watched was with Chad. And ever since then, I was just like, dang, okay, first of all, he's really good at interviewing people. It has a nice flow to it. I love like, the, the Instagram Live. No one's done it this way before. The platform you're using, um, you've done a great job. So keep it up. Well, it's just going to keep growing and getting better. So Well, thank you so much. I mm -hmm. have a lot of fun with it. It has been a, a crazy journey. Always trying to find ways to do it better. I recently found out you can add filters to lives. So now I use oh. the short stash filter. Oh. Uh, and so now, now, now I look, I think maybe just a smidge better. I always got to use filters. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm always trying to improve. My next big task is to try and figure out how to, to increase audio quality for the podcast. Because, gotcha. you know, on Instagram Live, the audio quality isn't perfect. Right. And partly that has to do with the microphones that people yeah. use. There's uncontrollables. Yeah. Nonetheless, it's a lot of fun. Good. All right, let's answer a few of these questions here. We got about 12 minutes left and then we'll wrap up uh, here. A question from our friend and coffee aficionado, Chad Covington asks, guacamole versus hummus. I, I've been on a chocolate hummus kick lately. Chocolate. I don't know if you what, guys what? have ever had chocolate hummus. Oh my God, it's seriously the best thing in the world. It tastes like chocolate mousse and you can like dip fruit in it. You can put it on toast. It's like a healthy dessert. But I've never heard of this. You have to try it. If you, if you okay. have Trader Joe's where you live, they have a really we don't. good... No Trader Joe's. Okay, well, when you come to Vegas, we're going to go to Trader Joe's and we're okay. going to get chocolate hummus. It's going to be a great time. Um, I'm down. But you can find it other places too. Um, but I would say, like, if I had to choose, like, which one would I eat for the rest of my life? I'm going to say guacamole. But it does depend cool. on the day. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, our friend MJ underscore Incro, uh, who is one of the guys behind the other incredible podcast, mm -hmm. Dominerds, asked, would you climb Mount Fuji again? 
You've climbed Mount Fuji first off? Yeah, yeah. So back in, oh gosh, 2015, I think, 2015, um, after wow. Kandama World Cup, I stayed for like a week after with Keith and him, I, Yuka, Rod, Eric, um, Kengo. I think that was our whole crew. We all climbed Mount Fuji together. Um, That's cool. And I would absolutely do it again. It was such a great time. Um, it was It was really crowded and it was weird in the sense that there was like, a noodle shop on the top of Mount Fuji. There was vending machines mm. on the top of Mount Fuji. It was very touristy and I did not like that aspect of it, but the experience mm. in itself was absolutely worth it. So if you're ever at Kanama World Cup, I suggest that you stay a week after, or if you're ever in Japan, like stay mm. after or come before the event because the events are always so jam packed full of stuff, which isn't bad, mm -hmm. but you don't really get to like experience Japan on experience your own Japan. in your own time in a small crew. Um, so if you're ever there, it's, it's totally mm -hmm. worth it. Um, stay a week after. Now I've been told that catch and flow is a little bit more chill and yeah. you get some more time to go and do things. Have you been to catch and flow first off? I have, I, I went to the first okay. one in Shibuya in 2014. Um, I actually was there for a gift show, um, like basically the, the New York toy fair, but in Tokyo and I was there with TJ and well, Kenzaki san that's where I got that skateboard. And um, yeah. we ended up just staying for basically the full month in Tokyo. Oh, and, so cool. Because uh, that was the first catch and flow in that train station. Um, that was the one that Red Bull actually sponsored. And we got oh, to cool. shoot this like video with Red Bull Japan. It was so sick. But awesome. I went to that one and then I didn't go, I think, to any more until not last year, but the year before. 2018. So, yeah. So for someone like me, if I was to take a trip to Japan to choose between Kendama World Cup or catch and flow, what one would you recommend for me? <sighs> Well, it depends. Do you like competing, first of all? Competing is a backseat to the community for me. Okay. I would say in terms of community, if you're just there to like meet people and get the full experience, I'd say start with Kendama World Cup because you'll just get like the overload and like just the amount of like crazy stimulus that you get from being at that event is so unreal. But if you're looking for something more chill, more laid back, more free time, definitely catch and flow or just mm. go to both. I mean, definitely go to both eventually. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd mm -hmm. love to go to all the events. There's so many I want to go to. Okay, uh, a couple more questions here. Uh, a, okay. a few quick ones and then there's another couple that might take a little bit. A few quick Kendama related ones. Okay. What is your favorite wood to play on? Uh, maple. I like Maple Ken with a Beach Tama. That's what I did on my Pro Mod. Um, before on my, on my V1, I did maple and maple, but I felt like the Tama didn't break in as well. So using a maple Ken with a beach Tama, I feel like it just, it breaks in much better. So that's my favorite combo, but I do really also like playing like Ash and just regular beach. Mm. I mean, I like yeah, them all, what, but your, your newest pro mod, is that maple on maple or is that maple on, on beach? Beach. I can't yeah. Remember. So the, the it is maple is beach. beach. Yep. So the one that you have is maple on maple. Maple on maple. Yeah. I wasn't sure about the new one. I, I should pick that one up. Is there, are they still in stock? I, I believe look. so. Yeah. Kay. If not, let me know. I'll All right. Work something I'll, out for you. <laughs> I'll check it out. Kay. All right. Uh, Elko Kendama asked, what is the trick that took you the longest to lace on film? Oh my gosh. I, every trick. I, I am not somebody who likes to go grind a trick on film. I, I don't like to film tricks. Um, I'll get a spark of like inspiration where sometimes I'm like, yes, today I'm going to film. I'm going to make a little video, whatever. But I would say nine times out of 10, it just takes me forever to hit anything, even if it's something simple. And I don't know why. I don't know what it is. If it's the pressure of the camera, even if I'm by myself, like it just takes forever. Mm -hmm. But I would say probably uh, when I first got arm bounce to stilt, that took a long time. That took Ooh, multiple yeah. sessions. Arm bounce to stilt, like one turn fast hands. Like now it doesn't even seem that hard. But when I was first learning it, it took forever. And then there that, was another that one that still seems quite hard to me. Yeah. Well, once you unlock it, it's there, you know? Um, but then the other one is, I would say, it's in the, it's the very last trick of the All Girls Kandama Open Portland video from 2016. It's the one that Dave shot. But it was around one, two, three, J-Stick Whirlwind. And that took a long oh, time. Oh, yeah, that would yeah. take, that's a tough trick. Because too. you keep missing the last triple Whirlwind and you're just like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I hate missing the mm -hmm. last trick in a, in a long line like that. Oh my gosh. It is the most defeating. Story uh, of my JT, life. <laughs> JTU Locke asks, have you been to Michigan or know any of the DKT crew? Uh, the Downriver Kanama team. I don't, personally. Do you? Um, Down River hey, have you been to Michigan? Grand Rapids is in Michigan, right? Yep. Well, there's a Grand Rapids everywhere. There's a Grand Rapids in... I'm so bad at geography. There's, there's a lot of Grand Rapids. There's one in my note, I think. Okay, no. I, I have been to Michigan. I went to actually... It's so random. It was the Great okay. Lakes Kite Fest in Michigan. 
um it was i think in 2015 or something i went with tj and we did this like kite festival event it was so random but i've been there so yeah i mm. didn't spend a lot of time it was like three or four days at most but all right cool we got a couple questions left in here i'll ask a couple real quick answers on these uh chad Cummington asks how are you so good at still trays lick in the bevel Coffee. That's all it oh, is. I was going to say it's coffee, oh, obviously. Coffee, Co lick the bevel, lace. <laughs> Have you ever tried dipping your bevel in coffee? No, but that's a that good idea help. because then when you, you lick that. it, it would taste better. I don't know. I'm trying mm. not to lick my bevel with all this COVID <laughs> stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this question was answered at the beginning as well. But again, for those that are tuning in now, Matthew underscore Kanoma underscore UK asked, who most inspired you as a player? Um, I, uh, so earlier we answered this one, but it was Misu and Brian Skagline, both for different mm. reasons, but style, passion, tricks, skill, all of it. All right. And then question here from Raphael.dama, trick that you love and hate at the same time. Jumping stick or like one turn airplane, like the easiest stuff that like, you know, you can do, but then when you miss it, you're just like, no. <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah. and this one I think is for me, uh, Ralph underscore a underscore I asked, where did the coffee gang joke come from? Uh, brief history on the coffee gang thread. Uh, there's another guy here in Alberta. His name is Kareem. And he once posted a poll on his story asking, you know, what is the best drink or something? And he put up tea and I said, and I screenshot that and I put that on my, my feed and I said, no, coffee's better than tea. And then all of a sudden that started a whole riot over the course of a week and has slowly evolved into now a pretty persistently used hashtag of hashtag coffee gang. Yeah. And <laughs> coffee gang is just way better. Yeah. It's pretty simple. It, it is. It's always been around. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, I think we got maybe two more questions here that we can, we can hit. Okay. Or one more, it looks like. Uh, this one, again, was already answered by Kurujima uh, from Japan, I believe. Bish, are you quitting Kusa? You gave no. us a good answer. No. Kusa, no. blood all the way through. You can even see it in the bottom cup here. Tribute, Tribute for life. Tribute for life. Well, Haley, thank you so much for joining the review. This has for been sure. a huge highlight for me. I love these every week. I never get bored of them. Uh, thank you so much. Is there anything you would like to say to those out there that are going to be listening via the podcast or via the IGTV later? Um, I would just say thank you for listening. First of all, if you've made it this far in the podcast, um, keep supporting the review. It's awesome. You know, you've done a great job. Um, it's, it's so cool to hear from all the different new people and people that I already know. Um, so yeah, just keep supporting, keep sharing the Dama love. Um, there is one thing that I feel like since you're such a coffee nerd, I wanted to show you. Okay. And um, this is something that I got in Japan as a gift in 2015 or 2016. Um, but a little bit of a, a little story on it. So I was in Osaka. It was during one of the Kendama World Cups. And Kazuma Iwata, you know, maker of Mugen, he also mm -hmm. rock climbs. And oh, so, no. yeah, and so did, and Turner was there and Dave was there and both of them were getting into climbing too at the time. So all three of us were like, we should go find a climbing gym in uh, Osaka and, you know, go with Kazuma. And so we all went climbing. It was super fun. And then afterward, we stopped at this little gift shop and he wanted to buy a gift for everybody on Kendama USA. And so we got to go with him and pick something out for everyone that wasn't there. But mm. he got me this and it's like this really sick coffee grinder. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen those. Those are so cool. Yeah. So I've awesome. had this and I really only, I use it here and there. Um, but I've taken uh, it out with me. Piece. Like it is. And I, I mean, I have an electric one. It's just way more practical. Yeah. But it, it's just, I don't know. I love it. And it's from Kazuma and it's from Japan. And I don't know. I feel That's like awesome. you would just nerd out on it because. Absolutely. My, one of my roommates had one of those too mm -hmm. back, back in the day. Oh, they're really cool. Definitely not practical when you have an no. electric grinder, but they're definitely a fun piece to have in your house. I should pick one up if I ever go to Japan. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that said, we got a minute and 30 seconds here left. I want to let you guys know, those of you that tune in the chat, thank you so much for tuning in each week. This is a huge honor for me to be able to host these conversations. Um, this will be recorded and put up on IGTV to follow and on podcast here shortly this afternoon. I always appreciate the shares and the love. And if you can, uh, to help push the review to more people so more people can get involved here is go on to Apple Podcasts and quickly give it a rating, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the show and what can be made better. That will always help the show get better and just reach more people and grow the Kanama community. Uh, that said, next week we have up on the review, Steezy Wonder or Steve Ooh. from Analog on the review. We're going to be talking his story. We're going to be talking Analog Kanamas and we're going to be talking some of the work that he's been doing in the community behind the scenes and his involvement. 
Uh, if you don't know Steve, he's a really, really warm hearted guy and I'm really excited to host him. Yeah. Uh, so shout out to Steve, shout out to Haley, shout out to all of these people and shout out to uh, Bigfoot Handmade again for sending me these coasters. These things are awesome. Made out of Spectraply and the stand that he made up there. Awesome. I love you guys all so much. And I'll see you guys next week on The Brew Yeah, Much love, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Thank you, Adam. Hey, my pleasure. Stay caffeinated, everyone. All right. Peace out.